Hey YouTube, Noble Snow here again. Uh, just gonna help you guys out with uh, playing Yu-Gi-Oh, having a good time, and you know, just helping you out with rulings. Um, and as far as I've the length of competitive play I've been doing, I feel like the two most notorious mistiming cards competitively have been Light Pulsar Dragon and Kuraz the Light Monarch. So I'm going to explain to you guys how to know when these two miss timing. Because boy, can they miss timing a lot. The reason being is because they are win effects. Not only are they win effects, but they say win and you can. Now, um, if something says win and um, it, it doesn't give you a you can option, like when this card is sent to the graveyard, I don't know, a special summon it or something. Um, fun fact, it never misses timing. Um, and also, it never misses timing if it says if. So like if it says if this card is sent to the graveyard, it also cannot miss timing. But if it says the win and the you can, it can miss timing. And I will read both of these effects off to you guys. So Light Pulsar Dragon reads, You can special summon this card from your hand by banishing one light and one dark monster from your graveyard. You can special summon this card from your graveyard by sending one light and one dark monster from your hand to the graveyard. Now here's the important part. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one level 5 or higher dark dragon monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. Karaz the Light Monarch reads, when this card is normal or special summoned, you can destroy up to two cards on the field. For each card destroyed, that card's controller draws one card. This card cannot attack during the turn it is normal or special summoned. Uh, so it says when this card is normal or special summoned. That is why it can miss timing. So first off, we're going to start off with Light Pulsar Dragon because this one is a simple and easy one. Let's say we got Light Pulsar Dragon and we tribute set it for... Uh, Karaz or just any monster um, You would think like pulsar would get its effect to special summon a red eyes darkness melt dragon or some other Target you may have in your graveyard, but fun fact it does not The reason being is for it to get its effect It being sent to the graveyard has to be the last thing to happen um, that means that um Basically, basically, it has to be destroyed by battle, really. It might as well just say when this card is destroyed by battle. Because when you tribute it, the last thing to happen is the tr like the monster getting summoned. Uh, it's Let's say you synchro summon with it. The last thing to happen is the synchro monster gets summoned. Um, if you fusion summon with it, the last thing to happen is the fusion monster getting summoned. Um <clears throat> Like, <laughs> there's really not very many other things other than it get, getting destroyed by battle that makes it not miss timing. Uh, so that one was a quick and easy one. So let's go to Kuraz next. So, the main reason that people were playing Kuraz was because you could summon it off Ether, the Heavenly Monarch. And let's go over situations where it would miss timing. Basically, its summon has to be the final thing to happen. So if there's anything in a chain link higher than it, it will not happen. So let's say you have Return of the Monarch. And let's say you tribute your Erebus on the field to summon Ether, the Heavenly Monarch. So to make Kuraz get its effect off Ether's effect, let's say we go chain link 1, chain link 2. So we send those two, and let's just say we uh, search a return. Sorry, you're supposed to, <laughs> man, I'm like kind of cheating here. Sorry, you're supposed to search, and then this resolves sending those two, and then special summon Kuraz. And then, since this was the last thing to happen, Kuraz does get its effect. But let's, let's say we do that differently. Let's say we tribute the Erebus for the Ether the Heavenly Monarch. Let's say we go chain link one return of the monarch, chain link two ether the heavenly monarch. So we send those two, special the Kuraz. Then the Kuraz gets summoned, but we're still resolving this effect to add the Erebus to our hand. In that situation, Erebus would, uh, sorry, Kuraz, Kura, sorry about that, Kuraz, 
this card would miss timing because this was still resolving. Uh, now let's look about how when we used this effect during the opponent's turn when it would work. So believe it or not, back in 2016 during the Monarch days, um, Karaz actually didn't miss timing that often when it came to being summoned on the opponent's turn. Um, so say your opponent went activate Leviathan Dragon effect uh, to gain that 3,000. You would think, even if you chained Ether effect, banishing, you would think, oh wait, snap, Leviathan Dragon was the first thing to happen. Um, it would, like, Kuraz would miss timing, but no. Um, the Ether is just getting summoned, and then that resolves. And then on a new chain link, Ether would be able to activate, sending the two to special Kuraz. And then because that was still the last thing to happen, the Kuraz would uh, still get the effect. So it was, <laughs> it was, it wasn't very often that the Kuraz would miss timing when summoned during the opponent's turn off Ether, but, uh... <clears throat> it was so easy for it to miss timing when you summoned it on your own turn. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you out. Um, now, these are both uh, pretty old cards. Like, this saw uh, competitive play for the most part in 2012. Uh, it saw a little bit of play in Guard Dragons. Um, and this saw competitive play in 2016. Um, so, you know, like, a lot of, a lot of the times... Um, effects say the word if. Um, so cards don't miss timing too often, but it still does come up. Um, Yang Zings were printed in 2014 and they miss timing. Fun fact, if a Yang Zing attacks and you go chain link one MST, <laughs> target a back row, and then chain link two mirror force, um, because MST was the last thing to happen, the Yang Zings floating effects will actually miss timing. But uh, yeah, um, I think as the years go on, less and less cards will miss timing, but, uh, still just an important thing to know, and, you know, old cards can always come back. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any other video ideas of, uh, helpful things I can teach you guys, yeah, let me know. I'm always up to try new things. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.